Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Doximity stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Doximity is an online networking service for medical professionals. Some people have referred to this company as the LinkedIn or Facebook for physicians. The company is headquartered in San Francisco, California and was founded in 2010. It went public a few weeks ago in 2021 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange. It was launched in 2011 and by 2013 it became one of the largest networks for U.S. healthcare professionals. 10% of U.S. doctors were members. By the beginning of 2014, 40% of U.S. physicians became members. In 2018, it reached 1 million members, accounting for more than 70% of U.S. physicians. Currently, it's up to 80%. Also, half the nurses and physician assistants are on the platform. Last year, it launched a video telehealth app, allowing physicians to video call patients through smartphones. This was a game changer for the company. It raised half a billion dollars through an IPO last month. The stock opened at $26 per share. And this is unreal, over 10,000 physicians participated in the IPO, and in total they owned 15% of the company's stock. Most of the company's revenue comes from marketing services. Since it has such a large amount of medical professionals using its platform, it's an ideal place to market drugs, supplements, services, and a lot of other things. Doctors can get CME credits just by reading news feeds on the app. The news feeds are conveniently suggested to the doctors when they log in. These credits are required for most medical professionals. CME means continuing medical education and consists of educational activities to maintain, develop, or increase the knowledge, skills, and professional performance and relationships that a physician uses to provide services for patients, the public, or the profession. You can also send HIPAA secured messages over the app. 90% of medical students use this app to search for places to do their residency, rank the programs, etc. This helps with retention, so once a student becomes a doctor, they're already familiar with Doximity, using the platform, and using the service. It's also a great place for people to find their first job or switch to another job. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 9 billion market cap. They're trading at $50 a share and they have 178 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have positive and growing free cash flow up to 78 million in 2021. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that also grows quite a bit, 8 million up to 50 million. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows a lot from 86 million up to 207 million. So it looks like this company is doing all the right things. They're growing their revenue. They're growing their bottom line. They seem unstoppable. This is their income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Their cost of revenue is pretty low because once the doctors are on the service, it pretty much runs itself. Of course, you need people to support the app. If a doctor is having difficulty getting on or they can't connect, they have really high gross margins. Of the 207 million of revenue, 175 million was converted into gross profit. They do have a lot of operating expenses because they're constantly doing research and development to improve the app and also marketing costs. But they do have positive operating income every year and it grows a lot from 7 million up to 53 million. It grows more than seven times. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which also grows a lot from 8 million to 50 million. So their income statement looks really solid. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they generated nearly $83 million of operating cash flow in 2021. 
Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Tech companies tend to have low capex because most of the money is spent in research and development. Companies with high capex are oil and gas companies or manufacturing companies. Operating cash flow minus capex give you your free cash flow and they have positive and growing free cash flow each year. So it's super impressive how much this company is growing and how profitable they are at such an early stage of their business model. This is the equity section of the company's balance sheet. Additional paid in capital is how much capital the company raised in stock offerings. This doesn't include the IPO because the balance sheet is as of 331 and their IPO was just done recently in June. So they generated $30 million from selling capital stock. And they also have $36 million of retained earnings. Retained earnings is a sum of all the previous net incomes. So far everything we're looking at is an A plus for this company. They're growing rapidly, they're already profitable, not much more you can ask for. Let's look at the capital structure, 67 million of equity, 1 million of debt. They're 98% equity, 2% debt. And they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet as you can tell from their net debt. Their WAC is 9.69% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 5.8 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4.8 billion. We divide that by 178 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $27. They're trading at $50, so they're trading at 86% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street's valuation is pretty close to where they're trading at. They're saying the stock is worth $53. The stock IPO'd at $26, but like most IPOs, the stock was driven up pretty quickly. It did peak at about $65. It came down to $50. I think a good entry point is around $35. But the thing is, the stock price may not come down that far. And it could go way up and this could be a hundred billion dollar stock and you might have missed out on a great opportunity. So if you're really bullish on this stock, I say just buy it. That's what I did when Facebook IPO'd. I bought it around 40 and almost right away I was down 50%. And a lot of people were saying it was overvalued to start and maybe I should have listened to them, but I ended up waiting five or six years and selling for a 400% return. I much rather overpay for a great company that underpay for a crappy company because I know in the long run that great company will end up doing well and that crappy company will probably never be profitable and I may lose all my investment. Even though that crappy company may have been undervalued when I bought them, if you think about food it may make more sense. If there was a fast food joint that you thought tasted terrible and it's normally $5 for a meal just because the meal is discounted 50% to $2.50 doesn't mean you're going to buy it and eat the food. But if there's a restaurant and you love the food there and it normally costs $40 for a meal and during a special holiday it costs $60 so it's overvalued the food, you're still willing to pay a premium because you like the food. Same thing with the stock. If it's a great company, it's not the end of the world if you pay a premium because you're probably going to be rewarded in the long run. But if you're looking for a discount on garbage, you're probably not going to make money in the long run. 5 million shares have been traded on average each day since the stock IPO'd. They're growing at a rapid pace. Their earnings grew 100% in the past year, while its industry only grew 28%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when they IPO'd, you'd be at $9,400 today. Even though they opened at $26, I don't think anybody but insiders could have got it for that price. It looks like the price regular investors like me and you could have gotten it for was $53. That's the starting price according to this chart. And now it's currently $50, so it's down 6%. The founder and CEO of the company, he's an ex-Goldman Sachs guy. He owns 29% of the stock and overnight he became a billionaire a multi-billionaire. He owns two and a half billion dollars of the company's stock. Then Emergence Equity owns 14% Interwest, then Morgenthaler Management and Threshold Ventures. Let's look at their financial ratios. 
Their price multiples are really high, 177 PE, 43 price to sales, and 133 price to book. Because their stock price is pretty inflated at this point, so their price multiples look pretty weak. When a company has really high price multiples, that indicates they're in growth mode. The idea is the company is going to grow a lot and their price multiples will eventually come down to earth. And I do think that's going to be the case. I think this company is going to be worth a lot of money in a few years. They have an amazing ROE at 75%. They have a high current ratio of 2.1. They have 142 million of cash on their balance sheet. And this balance sheet is as of 331. It does not include the $500 million they got from the IPO because the IPO was recently just last month. So if you add that amount, they have a ton of cash to work with. So they're going to be aggressively acquiring other companies, getting new products, and they're already profitable. I just can't imagine how well this company is going to be in two, three years. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of seven companies in the same industry as Docs. And if Docs has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. Teladoc is its biggest competitor. I also highlighted their ratios. So Teladoc has negative earnings, so we can't look at the PE. Docs has positive earnings, but they have a really high PE. Teladoc is doing much better in price to sales and price to book. Teladoc is more mature of a company. They started in 2002, so they have more history. Both companies have high current ratios. Docs is obviously winning in ROE. They have the best ROE on this list. They're one of the few companies with positive earnings. Both companies are really low in debt, under 10%, but Docs is winning that category at 2%. And Teladox is about three times the size of Docs. And of course, neither company pays a dividend, but if Docs keeps growing, I could see them paying a dividend in the next few years because they're going to have a lot of excess funds. So either they buy back stock or pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 86% premium, but this company is doing all the right things. I'm pretty confident they're going to be number one in their industry. And I think they're already pretty close to being number one at this point. And the fact that so many doctors participated in IPO, they put their own money on the line. That's how bullish and confident they are in this company. So they must really love this app. I talked to a couple of doctors that are clients of mine and they love this app. They tell me it has improved their life tremendously. Of course it helps the patients as well because now the doctor is able to communicate with them a lot easier. So I could easily see this company being a $100 billion market cap company. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.